Good evening. There's an old song that I want to sing that means a lot to me.
when we go to the grocery store, I'll get, they don't put them in grocery bags anymore. You used to bear hook them and go. Now you got all those little plastic. I'll take my arm and I can probably put 30 or 40 pounds on this arm. <laughs> and then I take each finger and I hang them on each finger. And then I just get one in this hand. And here I go, making trips back and forth. And you know, it, it's amazing how God knew what He's doing when He made us. You just think, what if our nose was under our armpit? <laughs> what if our ear was at where our nose was? What if our mouth was back where our uh, top knot on our spine is? Or you say, man, it wouldn't work that way. Well, God knew it wouldn't work that way. It would be out of order. So God said in order for a church to function, there are certain things must be done. And there's an order that it's got to be set in in order for it to function. And for, aren't you glad God put one foot forward, both foot forward, instead of one back, one forward? <laughs> now you're starting to understand why churches are in the messes that they're in. Right. Right. It's because they've got out of order. And I'm not talking about one song prayer, two songs offering, three songs, and the preacher preaches uh, 15 minutes, a sermonette for Christianettes, and everybody goes home. I'm not talking about that. We're talking about let everything be done decently and in order. So he tells Timothy that prayer is to be in the church, uh, that not only prayer, but he talks about the pastor and how the pastor is the under shepherd, how the pastor is the one that, that feeds the flock and what kind of qualifications he must have. And then he comes to the deacon, what kind of qualifications the, the deacon must have. So God is setting an order. And after he sets this order and, and Paul writes to Timothy, we come to the fourth chapter. Now this is going to be something that is significant to you and to me. This is going to bear witness with our soul and spirit tonight. First verse of the fourth chapter. Now the Spirit. And I want you to notice when it says Spirit, He's not talking about just living. He's talking about the Holy Spirit of God. That's what you get when you get saved. He comes to live in you, dwell in you. For this reason, He's going to be a comforter, a guide. He's going to be a leader. He's going to teach you the truths and help you to understand the truths. So Jesus, when you get saved, He will never depart from you. He gave us that promise. Now the Spirit of God is inspiring and speaking to Paul as he writes this letter. Now he's saying what he's going to say now that the Spirit of God is saying it to him, and he's just pinning, pinning it down. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith. Now why is that so important? Well, faith is what gets us into the household of God. By grace you saved through faith, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So he says... In the latter times, there are going to be some that will leave the faith. They will exit the faith. That they will make a departure from the faith. Now, what is the faith? The faith is believing that Jesus died on the cross, shed his blood, buried the third day, resurrected. Forty days later, made his ascension into heaven, seated by the right hand of God, making intercession for us. Now he said in the latter days, now we're living in those days, some shall depart from the faith. Giving heed to seducing spirit and doctrines of devil. Now seducing spirits, what's he talking about? You see? Okay, good. Now he says the devil will come to us how? Nah. Nah. A sheep and wolf. A sheep and wolf. Or a 
wolf. Or wolf in sheep clothing. In sheep clothing. Boy, y'all are sharp tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I messed you up. I know I did. So he's talking about the Spirit of God is saying in the latter days, some shall depart from the faith and they will give over, give over, be persuaded, be persuaded by what kind? The seducing. Now, I don't know how to say this, but say it. <laughs> Has anybody ever seduced you? Have you ever been under the allure, the attraction, and the, the drawing of somebody that's able to take and feed you a lie? Barbara said, that's what I did not met her. <laughs> feed you a lie and persuade you that they're right. I think we've all encountered that sometime or another in our lives. She said, Glenn, I don't know what you do without me because I am a good citizen. But it's plenty in the closet. To be under a power that can seduce you, divert and cause you to turn away from the truth. Now that's what the devil wants. Now listen. He's not writing to the people in Asia. He's not writing to the people in Paducah. He's writing to the children of God, the house of God, the born again believers. Right. What's inside the church. Now it's easy for us to say, and I've heard preachers preach this, Boy, everybody out here in the world, blah, 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 seducing spirits. Well, that's true. But the devil wants to get inside the church to create havoc and to teach the Word of God so it diverts from God. He said he's a wolf in sheep's clothing. I'll tell you, and you listen closely, at your TV preachers. I'm talking about you big boys. When's the last time, the last time that you heard any one of them use the word hell out of the lake of fire? Just think about it. When's the last time besides here with Keelan preaching about the blood of Jesus Christ and the power that is in that blood. See, I don't know of anything else to preach and teach. The apostles didn't know anything else to preach and teach. Excluded from that, you don't have a message. You don't have anything that will get one soul saved. But now, the devil is so cunning that over the years... He has removed the power of God out of the buildings of God. How? Because the Word of God is not being preached. There's a lot of places it's being preached. But there are a lot of places it's not being preached. So what the church has gotten to, it's a social club. You know how you can spot them? When the fellowship hall is bigger than the place that people worshiping. That's right. You drive by and you see a little bitty old church and over the side you see a gymnasium. Not these things are good. I'm not <laughs> preaching against them. They'll have a gymnasium. They'll have an educational wing that they don't educate anybody in. And they'll have a fellowship hall that's three times bigger than all of them. So what does that tell me? That tells me they like to play and eat more than they like to worship. Amen. And there's nothing wrong with eating. There's nothing wrong with playing games. There's nothing wrong with it. But your priorities have got to be put in the right place. God's first. Amen. And after that, you know, we can adjust and get these priorities. It's God. It's the husband. It's the wife and it's the children. Now we got a bad problem in America. The men are a bunch of sissies. Right. right. Come on now, don't you quit.
Put it on me now. <laughs> they ain't got what it takes to step up to the plate to assume the position of being the head of the wife and the head of the household. They won't leave. Catch on to this now. Most of the times, the women have to take the children to church. Don't, don't quit. Think, come on, Barbara. <laughs> but we never had that problem. Never had that problem. I got saved. But God let you see, you start to see how this order works. Now, when you get out of the order of God, then you're in trouble. And he said in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. Underline the word devil in your Bible. And that means demons. A demonic teaching. A demonic teaching. Now, what they're teaching is, is not something that you would suspect is evil. It's a feeling good. Now I could come in here and brag on every one of you and say, man, y'all are the greatest people I ever seen. And you are. But you're like me. You're flesh, blood, and bone, and you have things in your life just like I have in my life that need to be worked on. And need to be given to Christ and put under the blood. We need more study of the Word of God. We need more prayer life. We know that, but we don't do that. So he's telling us the order that God set up must be carried out. The reason the church in the 21st century has lost its power is because they have excluded themselves from the power of God. The Word of God is the power. Did you see in Houston, Texas, where they did something this week? Five pastors, they subpoenaed their sermons. Right. Because they were preaching against things that the city sanctioned. Did you ever think you'd ever see that in America? No. no. They'd have a hard time subpoenaing being one of mine. <laughs> because I don't use notes. I'd have to give them a rerun. Whether I could or not, I don't know. But we're living in that time now when the world is not sure. These are the things. I get so tired of our leaders saying, what we need to do is have a, a debate. What we need to do is have a discussion. What we need is more, is, you know, Ebola's outbreak is getting rampant because our leaders are ignorant. <laughs> and then after it breaks out, they say, now they told us first up front, hey, no, nah, this is not going to happen. Then it happened, they said, well, what we've got to do, it was the hospital's fault. How can it be their fault when they don't know what to do? Now we're going to back up and reevaluate. Oh, I've been evaluated and evaluated until I'm part of evaluation. So Paul said, doctrines of the, the devil never reveals himself as we've been taught. From a little kid all the way up, I was taught, you were too. That the devil wears a red suit and carries a pitchfork and he's got horns and he's got a spear on his tail. And I went around all my life looking for that character because I knew that I would recognize him. But I never have seen him. You know what I've seen him at? I've seen him in the most beautiful forms in the world. The most attractive forms in the world. These are those seducing spirits. Seductive that will draw you to them. Third verse, he said that it will come into church now forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain 
from meats which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. I guess this went away years ago, but when, from grade school through high school here in the county, every Friday, what did we have? Fish. 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 I didn't even like fish. <laughs> but we had fish. Now, why did we have fish? The Catholics ate, I don't know whether they still do or not, but now on Friday we had fish and I kept asking them. I didn't know what a Catholic was. They said, well, Catholics eat fish on Friday. I said, well, I'm a Baptist. When I get home, I eat anything I want. And I couldn't understand why I thought I was suffering. And they had put that little piece of, looked like a brick to me out front of me. They said, they said, in the church now, would abstain from eating certain types of food and forbidding to marry. This is not only the Catholic, but there are a lot of other religions in the world that they command that they abstain from certain meats that they can't eat it. And that they can't, if they hold a certain position, that they can't marry. Now what does that tell us? It tells us that Paul, when he penned this to Timothy, that he knew what he was talking about. Now we're living it. Now we're seeing these things that he wrote come to pass in our day and time. So it's important that we know the Word of God, study the Word of God, listen to the Word of God, be taught the Word of God, so that we will be aware of what's going on around us. Fifth verse. Fourth verse. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. If you set a hind quarter of a mule up in front of me, <laughs> well, I've eaten horse meat and didn't know it. When we went to Europe, I know I did. Why did I know it? A little stringy. And it was redder than anything I've ever seen in my life, but it was good. I just waited for it to nick. <laughs> and I said, thank you, Lord. May you bless this. May you bless this. So God said, in my heart, man, that's horse. But that's all right, because I've created it. You say, I don't believe that. What does the book say? Every creature that God created, it is all right for food. If you be received with thanksgiving. That means pray over it. Now it's hard to fix your plate and run to the living room and sit in front of the tube and say, God, thank you. Get out of the way. Hush. I want to see this. I'm the only one that does that. Nobody else does that. And it, isn't it embarrassing when you go out to a restaurant and people are sitting close to you and you get your food? And I've had people do this to me. Take me out and they just sit there and they keep putting their hands down. And they keep looking. If I make a move up like that, they'll make a move. I think, man, I'm going to get eaten get through this thing without praying. <laughs> and then I finally say, let's ask the blessing. <laughs> I know what they're saying. Hurry up. People are looking at us. We're strange. Well, you're supposed to be strange. We are a different, we are a peculiar people. We're not a worldly people. We are different from the world. I'm not ashamed of God. I'm not ashamed to say thank you God for what you've given us. 
We pastored in St. Louis. That was Sambo's we used to go to. A bunch of us went over to Sambo's on Sunday night. And I got preaching a little bit in the dining room with Sambo's. And then we got to singing. Here come the manager and the rest of the crew and said, Shh, you can't do that in here. I thought, well, what have I done that's wrong? You can't say anything about Jesus. You can't sing any gospel songs. That's the world. The world don't understand. So we've got to learn to adjust to it. Don't give over to it, but learn to just bow your backs and stand and say, I'm not ashamed of you. So that's an order that God has said. All right, that's enough for tonight. Aww. <laughs> Aww. <laughs>